Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're going to be taking a closer look at Superman American Alien issue number seven, the grand finale of writer director Max Landis's Superman miniseries. Does it make the cut? Does it live up to all the hype? Let's hop on in and find out for ourselves. So, as the comic opens, Superman, who is wearing by far the most traditional Superman costume we've seen him wear all series long, even though it still has some prototype armor on it. He's shocked to discover that the person perpetrating these attacks is none other than Lobo, the last Zarnian, the intergalactic bounty hunter and main man. This is jarring for Clark, because you gotta remember, at this point in this story, and at this point in his career, he's not really too sure about other life in the universe. He didn't even know he was a Kryptonian until last issue. Also, can I take a second to talk about the artist for this particular issue, Jock Man? He seems like he was born to draw Lobo. I don't think this guy has ever looked better. We discovered the main man was hired to come to Earth by some Thanagarians to level some buildings so one of their renegades would get scared and know that Earth wasn't safe. No doubt he's either talking about Hawkman or Hawk Girl right now. All this commotion has managed to garner the attention of the news, but not just the local news in Metropolis. Indeed, the entire world is watching Superman face down this alien invader right now. Superman being Superman tries his hardest to talk him down, but this is Lobo we're dealing with here. The dude just does not do sense. In fact, he's kind of disgusted at the idea of Superman, the last Kryptonian in the universe, using his amazing power to help people, and for free of all things. Knowing that this guy is a danger to planet Earth, and paired with the fact that he just found out he's the last of his race, Superman is ready for a good old-fashioned throwdown, while he even threatens to take that shiny space chopper and shove it right up his, and then it cuts out, and then we get reactions of everyone all over the place, from Lois to Jimmy to his parents, and even Lex Luthor, who found what he said to be absolutely hilarious, and I found it hilarious too. The fight itself is some admittedly pretty brutal stuff, Lobo of course being one of the very few characters who can actually go punch for punch with Superman, and that ends up kind of being the point of this scene where Lobo says, you know, you can beat me down as much as you want, but the fact of the matter is I can heal, and in 10 minutes I'll be back to normal, and I'm just gonna hurt you and your city all over again. And so, with the world watching him, Superman makes a very important choice, a choice that will define him as a hero and even as a man for years to come. He takes Lobo, and he throws throws him out into space as hard as he possibly can. And it's in this one moment, in this one display of power, that Superman becomes an icon. All over the world, everyone is talking about the Man of Steel, the big blue boy scout. Even in a hospital, world reaches Clark's ears. Now, there was also kind of a B-plot running through this story that Clark, the night before, had actually told Lois that he loved her, only for Lois to kind of blow her off. She's the first one to come and see him at the hospital. And yet, instead of being excited, though, he says that she should be out there right now writing about Superman because that's who she is, and that's the woman that he loves so much. In fact, all throughout today, when people thought he was being brave, he wasn't really trying to be himself. He says he was trying to be like Lois. It's at that moment Lois kisses him and agrees that, yes, she loves him too, and that their lives are going to get very, very interesting from here on out. Superman American Alien number 7 was one hell of a send-off to what will end up being one hell of a Max Landis series. While I've said every issue up until now felt like a very particular sort of movie, I think by far this issue right here feels the most comic booky, but in a good way. This series really did great time capsuling all these important events in Superman's life as a child, as a teen, coming to Metropolis, and here really becoming the cultural icon that everyone knows and loves. It was also pretty inspired to have Lobo be the villain to challenge Superman at this point in his life, considering how, if you look at it, they're kind of dark mirrors to one another, both the last ones of their race gifted with amazing power, but where Superman chooses to use his power for the better of all mankind in his new home, Lobo uses his power selfishly. I'm sure some people will argue the ending is maybe a little too understated for its own good, but I like it. It's mellow, you know? It's like this could be the end of any Superman story, and it's not the end of any Superman story. It's the beginning of his life and career as we know it. Overall, this book was one hell of a ride, and if you haven't picked it up yet, then I urge you to definitely read this one in trade. It has just jumped to the top of the must-read for this year pile, which is why I give it a 10 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.